always this little moment of joy when you manage to hook it up to the uh, projector. Uh, With the Windows product. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, my name is uh, Tristan Nito. I'm a French citizen. Uh, I now work for a small startup called uh, Cozy Cloud. I've been spending the last uh, 17 years of my life uh, helping a, an open source project that you may have heard of called Mozilla that does Firefox. Um, I was the uh, founder and president of Mozilla Europe for a decade. Uh, I will be discussing the decentralized sharing working group today. Uh, I'm the first speaker. We have 15 minutes, but we'll be three of us uh, speaking. So uh, expect a lot of slides in a very uh, short time frame. First, let me, uh, of course, state the obvious, but uh, it's at least the context in which we are operating, uh, that data centralization is a major, major uh, issue because basically all of us, maybe a little less us here than normal people, but even, even the, the best of us here uh, do have uh, some data uh, on a silo, uh, which, which is an issue because everybody does it. Uh, it means that our data is stored in maybe a handful of companies' uh, cloud services. Uh, and it means we basically hand over our data to computers that belong to someone else, which run, which run software that we have no idea about. <laughs> and we, have, we, know, we don't know what they do with our data, and they keep our data on these computers. Um, and also, because of the business model of many of these organizations, profiling what we do, who we are, what we like, uh, where we go, what we think, what we love, what we hate. Um, everything is profiled by these companies because we are not the customers of these companies. We are basically the product being sold to the actual customers of these companies, which are uh, people who do who buy advertising. Um, so this is, this is a particularly broken uh, business model. What's make it worse is that uh, it makes economically feasible to do mass surveillance. It's really, really hard to uh, do mass surveillance for uh, several million people, but if these people put all their data in maybe a handful of data centers and allow companies that owns, the, that owns these data centers to profile the users, then all that the NSAs of the world have to do is basically listen uh, to what is being uh, said in these data centers. So instead of putting microphones, if you will, in each of our homes, all that they have to do is put four microphones inside Facebook and Google and Dropbox and another one. So, um, and, and mass surveillance is just the, uh, ne the step just before uh, police state, which is also something, I don't know about you, but I want to avoid it. Um, so this is the issue that we are uh, dealing with uh, at Cozy Cloud. Uh, what we want to do and what we build is open source software that runs on a server, ideally the server is is hosted on your own, maybe it's in your kitchen or sitting next to your TV, next to your DSL box, and it, this is the place where you have your data and you can do what you want with it. And we, the good news is, we're not the only ones. Uh, there are other people such as OwnCloud uh, or uh, Node or Unhosted that work on this problem. Um, and, and, it's, and it's very nice to have them uh, with us uh, because the more we are, the better we, the more likely we are to be able to uh, empower users to take back control of their data and escape the uh, centralized silos that are uh, Facebook and Google and such. Now there, we are facing a very important problem within this community of people that build open source software uh, that want to empower users with the data is that we need to be interoperable. And right now we are not, because we've been solutions on our own. Um, but people expect 
if they go decentralized, they want to be able to do at least as much as they were used to do with Facebook. And, and Facebook and Google is all about sharing. So they want to be able to share just like they did, right? If, if, if we're saying, oh, by the way, you will, you will have your private space and your personal cloud, uh, but you have to give up on sharing. And, and also, you will have to pay for that. Because of course, you know, the business model of profiling and advertising would be gone. Uh, is, people will not follow us. It's, it's not going to work. Uh, so we need to be able to do just as well as they used to be uh, with, with the old silos. We need to be able to share. And for this, we need a protocol, which is an open one, that can be implemented by all the players in the field so that sharing uh, a photo, a file, a, a contact, a note, or some anything that you would handle with your personal cloud, we need to be able to share it in a either public or private way, mm -hmm. in a secure way. Um, and this is what we need uh, to work on. Because if we can't do that, then the value proposition that we have, which is basically privacy and taking back control of data for the users, people will not follow us because one of the most basic um, thing that they want from the cloud is to be able to share it. And if we don't offer it, they will not follow us, we will be duped. So this is, well, we've, we've seen in this volume already. That's, that's basically it. The big, the big fish <laughs> are going to eat us, but if all of us, small fishes, get together, we're going to eat them alive. So uh, we, we are, are creating a decentralized sharing working group, uh, which goal is to um, reach consensus on uh, interoperable, interoperable protocols to, seal, to solve real world problems of decentralized sharing. So how, we're, how are we going to do that? First, we will decide on a key uh, use cases around data sharing, what is important, what do we want to achieve. Then we'll review the various protocols that enable us to do that, and we will work on making sure we can implement uh, plugins slash uh, connectors on, on each system so that we can actually share uh, files and data with these protocols amongst different uh, vendors for uh, this technology. And for this, we have a shiny new GitHub place, uh, decentralized sharing working group, uh, which uh, deserves its own domain name, but uh, doesn't have it yet. We, we're going to fix that. All right. Uh, who's in uh, today? Some of us uh, in the room. How do you pronounce your name, Michiel? Say Michael. Let's see. Michael. Okay, <laughs> Michael. Uh, uh, Pierre. Uh, Benjamin, which is my CEO, who is not in the room today. Uh, and there's myself. Uh, Paul, who's uh, sitting in front row too. Uh, who's a colleague of Cozy Cloud and also uh, uh, doing some what's that, PhD, PhD uh, work uh, on on this uh, this very topic, and our friend uh, Ben Redmuller from uh, Known, uh, based in San Francisco, uh, and one of the uh, faces of the Indie Web Camp uh, group, and everyone that wants to join us in order to work on interoperability. Uh, about sharing in personal clouds. I leave the stage uh, now. Who's next? Is that you, Michael? <laughs> and then we'll have Paul. Okay. Um, yeah, so the things we want to work on with this um, sharing group is so we say, okay, sharing, and we want the, everything we do with silos to work with personal service. But um, to be a bit more specific and um, get to work uh, on specific things and um, prototyping uh, and sort of it's, it's a methodology from the new app can so just build something and if it works then we're done instead of talking about it. So some things we want to build um, with the people who want to join is a friend discovery so um, instead of saying are you on diaspora 
you should be able to say, are you on on the web? Are you online even? Or and um, you should be able to give any identifier or any user search uh, engine should be able to find not only other people who are the same using the same diaspora tool, but also users are using uh, Pumpio uh, or something else. And um, the second one would be private feeds. Um, there's uh, on the web uh, there are RSS feeds, and it's a very simple technology, but it works very well. A lot of these protocols are very simple, like just hyperlinks or RSS feeds. But what doesn't um, work, what is a lot harder, is private feeds. And um, if I want to uh, send you a, I can send you a public uh, web mansion and then ping your server. There are protocols for that, and your RSS reader will retrieve new things that I add. Uh, but if it's private, then this is more difficult because first of all, um, I have to target who I want to read, so I have to have an address book. I cannot just say I'm going to publish this text. Um, like the, the easiest tools to build are just saying you publish something. But if you have to target people, then it's harder. And also then, um, how do you send it? What endpoint uh, should you send it to so that this person finds out, but the rest of the world doesn't? And then, how does this person um, retrieve the content, which is um, probably some way password protected so that not everybody can retrieve it? And especially also then we send updates and you go back and forth. Um, so the whole thing that the web uh, with web feeds does, but for private uh, messaging. Then um, another one would be uh, syncing your devices via your server, um, which is um, uh, what in um, with Apple devices this um, goes automatically. Um, you don't even realize that you're actually using iCloud and going via an Apple server to synchronize your MacBook with your iPhone. Um, and uh, Dropbox also does this. And um, different um, personal server softwares um, have this functionality. But it would be nice if this was interoperable, so that you can just have any device sync client and any device sync server, so that um, you have, uh, say, you have an um, Ubuntu laptop, then Ubuntu would support this protocol. Then you say, okay, point to your server, which uh, supports the sharing protocol. It doesn't matter if it's an on cloud server or a cozy server or a known server or any server, but they will all be able to speak the same protocol. So any client works with any server. And then the fourth one would be, which is sort of like the big holy grail of if we do that one, then we know we have everything working, which is sharing um, whole folders with others, So, um, I, which is what you would do with Google Docs or um, Swell, for instance, also tries to solve that problem. Uh, so sharing, uh, so these could be folders, these could be like documents which you edit collaboratively, like um, actual full distributed versioning between servers of different people, with obviously privacy uh, incorporated in that as well. So that's just some ideas of to, to make it more concrete what we want to do with this working group. So over to Paul. Thank you. I'd like to show you um, a short demo that I did uh, this past day. I So this is a demo of uh, decentralized uh, sharing uh, between the two, uh, two remote servers. It is to illustrate uh, the kind of thing we like to do at uh, the working group. So how does it work? On the left, there is uh, my sharing application that I did uh, running on my personal server. By the way, I apologize for the look. As you can see, uh, I am not a designer. Otherwise, I will be fired one day. <laughs> <laughs> and on the right, more beautiful, it is my friend personal server running a Cozy Cloud instance. Uh, if you don't know about Cozy, uh, Tristan will talk about it uh, tomorrow morning. But uh, in few words, uh, it uh, consists of a personal server where you can host all your personal data and install uh, some applications to uh, manage your data. So you can have a photo application, a note application or even a contact application. So this is my uh, friend's contact. And uh, let's say I would like to uh, share with him some uh, contacts that I made uh, during the party uh, a few days ago. To do this, from my uh, application, I type his, uh, the address of uh, his server, my friend's server. Below is a list of my contacts. 
maybe zero, one, two, three. And I can choose which one I will share with him. So let's say it's Alice zero and Alice two. I click the share button. It's OK. And if I go back on my friend server and I update uh, the page, you can see Alice zero and Alice two, the two contacts uh, I just uh, shared with him. And the magic of it is not only the sharing, but also the, the synchronization. If my friend uh, suddenly realizes that uh, Alice Zero is actually, uh, let's say, uh, Tristan Lito, for example, I receive immediately the update on my own personal server. And it is working uh, both ways. I can add a note uh, about it on my <laughs> server. And if my friend go on the note bar, he received the notification as well. It's also, uh, it's also working with the second uh, contact I shared. Uh, if Alice 2 is in reality uh, Pauline, was pretty drunk uh, at this party, I think. The update is propagated to my friend server immediately. So this uh, is a very basic proof of concept of decentralized sharing from server to server. And as you can see, it's working pretty well. Actually, there are very few examples uh, in the decentralized world uh, with this kind of sharing, with uh, the synchronization uh, uh, with this efficiency. But the point is, uh, this uh, kind of sharing will be absolutely worthless if we cannot add interoperability. Uh, I want to make uh, this kind of sharing working with uh, on-cloud, known, uh, unhosted, uh, and so on. Otherwise, uh, we could just develop the best features in the world that would still remain uh, a distributed silo. And it is absolutely not what we want uh, as a working group. And that's the kind of thing that will be working, uh, hopefully, hopefully, with uh, some of us soon. Thank you. When can I get that? It's cool. <laughs> Hurry up! <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> yeah, well, if I could code. Yeah. yeah, are you aware of, um, there was some work, that Henry would know if he's still here, about the access control stand stuff that's been done in WPC that, that, that seemed like a generic methodology of, of how to encapsulate a kind of like a filter saying, or a publishing filter. Like okay, this these these who can see what I'm publishing. This is kind of like when you do a Facebook post to say, you know, da, 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 da. Um, uh, here's who can see what, I, what I'm posting. So it's kind of it's all access control. So if there was a if there was, if there was a more generalized access control methodology, it seemed like it'd be a good thing in yeah. terms of interoperability. There are several ones, and maybe you're referring to WebID or uh, client certificates. So uh, one server a discussion that was happening at the, the first uh, WeShare Labs camp, and uh, one way to implement it would be that um, you get access to this file if you have the right client uh, certificate. The server has the client, server client has the right uh, TLS certificate, or you could have a password, which might be an HTTP header. Um, it could be um, over. Um, VPN, or uh, there would be several ways. To, so once you decide, let's do it with this, then it would be pretty easy for everybody to go with that, unless that is not implementable in PHP, because then all the all the stuff that you can install on your LAMP server would not be able to implement. It. So um, the designing protocols, um, like if we're here to design protocols, then we would probably all be using uh, Google Wave already. Um, but there are a lot of practical problems, like so it has to be done in PHP because uh, both known and owned cloud, for instance, are installed in PHP. Yeah. So then that's a restriction that's much more practical than the actual uh, design of, you know, the engineering part is the easy yeah. part. So, so we, we, we need to build kind of like generic concepts and then implement it into various... Oh, we have the concept. Yeah. We all agree on the concept. Okay. Just not yeah. on the consensus. <laughs> But, but Facebook runs one of the biggest sites and it's written in PHP, right? So PHP is not necessarily a problem. Well, Facebook I mean, is the problem. Uh -huh. Facebook is the problem, right? 
But technically, a PHP, you should be able to do anything. But if, if you've written Facebook on it, you should be able to do anything. So you're saying if something's written in C, or you know, running on a machine that hasn't got a web server as such, it's just spitting out data, it ought to be able to spit that out to a PHP um, hook on the other person's stuff. Yeah, if we, if we choose a, a mechanism that requires you to have your own IPv4 address mm. or requires you to be able to execute um, C code, mm. um, for instance, because it has to be um, stay up on a server, um, that's not that's going to be a big barrier for adoption because a lot of free software that you can run on your server is for shared hosting um, of LAMP environments, for instance, WordPress mm. also. So there would never be a WordPress plugin for that because you cannot do it on a shared hosting environment. So it's just a practical uh, problem rather than a technical. Um, so I use my own cloud, but just through Debian, I've also set it up through Freedom Box. Uh, but I haven't heard of Cozy. How does that kind of compare to the other uh, projects? I'm not sure there is a short question to that, a short answer to that. Uh, it's not written in PHP, uh, <laughs> is one of it. Um, it's the, the uh, structure, the uh, architecture in Cozy Cloud is a lot more elaborate. It's uh, it works with CouchDB for synchronization purposes, uh, so it involves more complexity in the platform itself, but more, uh, I mean, I would say a higher level uh, services offered to, uh, to the applications because uh, synchronization is you know, already uh, built in and stuff like that. Uh, another difference uh, is that Cozy Cloud is, uh, for now, uh, very specifically uh, focused at the individual. Like when you show up on your server URL, you don't enter um, a username, you just enter a password because that must be you, right? It's, it's a personal cloud. So the, these kind of things. Uh, I, I, I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> okay, thank you. This is really, really great to hear Thank you. Okay, so now we have the uh, fuck up.